Hey everyone, happy Monday. Welcome to the stream. So glad you could be here. Tonight I'm going to be streaming Dragon's Lair, the 1983 Don Bluth animated interactive cartoon that sucked many of quarter away from small children and adult alike uh, back in uh, the arcades of the early 80s. Hey Paul Not Pat, great to see you. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could be here. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about this one. This is a game that... Uh, Certainly, I played my share of as a kid. Never got anywhere in it. Hey, Nick, good to see you. So, what we have here is the home version that allows infinite continues and infinite lives and things like that. And I'm hoping through just sheer trial and error, we can brute force our way to the end of uh, to the end of this uh, great looking and terribly playing game. Uh, in fact, if we do well, if we get through Dragon's Lair, I also have in this same collection, Dragon's Lair 2 and Space Ace, uh, two other games from the series that make up what this collection calls the Dragon Age Trilogy. So we might even dip our toes into some of those. But uh, yeah, glad everyone could join me in that. We're going to hop on in. Let's see if we can actually make this work. This feels like a very, very janky collection. Um, let's see here. Can we get it actually to appear on screen again? Hey, there it is. <laughs> That's port. It, that's perfect. There we go. Let's see here. Oh, Cure Slashy. Important question. Does Dragon's Lair have any protection from quarter brute forcing? You know, I'm not sure. And I don't know. That could also be something that was adjustable on the arcade boards, for all I know, that maybe if cruel arcade owners want to deny players the ability to uh, continue endlessly. All right, hopefully my audio levels are good here. Hey, Zach Maddock, good to see you. Let's get the uh, attract video going first so we all know the story of Dragon's Lair before we jump in. This will get you up to speed. Dragon's Lair, a fantasy adventure where you become a valiant knight on a quest to rescue the fair princess from the clutches of an evil dragon. Ooh, it's Dirk the Daring and Daphne. the actions of a daring adventurer finding his way through the castle of a dark wizard who has enchanted it with treacherous monsters and obstacles. <laughs> In the mysterious caverns below the castle, your odyssey continues against the awesome forces that oppose your efforts to reach the dragon slayer. <laughs> Lead on, adventurer. <laughs> Your quest awaits. Oh, how great does it still look? I love it. Oh, man, Epic Potato Fiend. Good to see you. And I don't know if there's any great excuse to boot up MAME. I have the worst luck with that program. I try to think about MAME too much. Okay, so we have some options we can set here. We'll start a new game. Let's go up to five lives. We're going to leave the move beeps on. And those are going to tell us when we've committed an action. We definitely want the move guide. That's going to hint us as to which direction we want to go. Uh, that's going to make life a lot easier for us. Arcade cabinet basically allows us to put an overlay that sort of looks like an old Dragon's Lair arcade cabinet and add some scan lines and stuff. I think we'll try to keep the, uh, the nice Dom Bluth animation full screen on this. Home version, I believe, will... Keep us moving through. Yeah, we have to complete each scene before we die. That'll, that'll add some difficulty. Then we're going to keep you on easy mode. So, okay, everyone. Let me get ready. And I apologize if it takes me a minute to respond to chat messages just because I imagine once the quick time events begin, 
I'm going to be locked in on this. And you know it's going to be great. You know, you can just tell. Those of you who watched me play games before, you know I'm going to be super good at this. You know this is exactly the kind of thing that plays to my strengths. Okay. We slide our sword at some eyeball, guys. Into the castle we go. Yeah, there, Dirk. Uh oh. Beautiful. We got this. <laughs> oh, I love it. This game is so good. <laughs> Just punch our way out that door. Okay, some Murray the skulls on the ground. Jump out of the ooze. Sling another sword. Jump through the door. Uh oh. More skeletons. Hey, hey. We have the beeps help a lot. The beeps are me hitting the button, though. They aren't prompts, they're confirmations. So, it's just to let me know that I've successfully heard an event. Whoop. Hey, there's our first death. Hey, Grayson, welcome. Thank you for the sub. Glad you could be here tonight to enjoy this fantastic game. This interactive movie, as I like to think of it. A term I just made up. Uh-oh. Oh, man. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, no! Thorns! Okay, trial and error. That's what this is all about. We're going to see a lot of repeats here. Okay, I messed it up again. We'll get killed by the scythe. Doing great. This is perfect. We're actually on world record pace right now. Away from the thorns, Dirk. Hmm. Hmm. Says Dirk. Flying flame sword. Mystical morning star. Green anvil of death. Some sort of spear, I think. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Irulian. So many memories unlocked for me too. Great to see you. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, it's it's definitely a game that I spent my fair share of time attempting in the arcade. Honestly, what you've seen just now in the like eight minutes I've been streaming it, five minutes I've been streaming it, is probably the farthest I've ever gotten in it. Yeah, it is ridiculously hard. I mean, in the arcade, you don't get the prompts on which way to move, right? You just have to figure it out from, like, context clues. Which is bananas. Okay, swat at that guy, jump out of the way of the ooze, run through the door. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> don't slip. Okay, get the eye. Uh oh. <laughs> Yes, I do, Zach Maddox. What was that called? The uh, gunslinging cowboy 3D holographic game that looks like sort of the game from uh, Star Wars that they uh, they play on the Millennium Falcon. I absolutely know that game. Time traveler or something? Yeah, because you go to different eras, right? Like if you're like one of the bad guys is a gunslinger. I think there's a futuristic cyberpunk maybe. I definitely remember that. And again, it's another game that I spent a lot of money on that didn't actually like seem to translate to gameplay or progress. Jump! Oh wow, Dirk. What have you gotten yourself into now? <laughs> spider at the end! That's very good! <laughs> hey, here's a spider! Uh-oh. Oh, no. Who's this? He's playing some sort of Tetris. I don't know what to do. Oh, my God. Can you imagine having to do this in the arcade and just figure it out? Save me! 
Okay. Here we go. A lot of these scenes also have mirrored versions, so if you get too used to, like, one, instead it uh, gives you, like, the mirrored version of it to make it a little more challenging. Oh, look at that. It's a very cool scene. Okay, lava room. I don't know why you'd have one of these in your castle. Get those magma men. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh no, game over. It was the future of video games like Dippin' Dots or the future of ice cream. Hey, I still believe Dippin' Dots are the future of ice cream. I believe the Dippin' Dots are our future, like that Whitney Houston song goes. <laughs> For some reason, my town's airport had that game and lethal enforcers in the departure lab. Wow. This guy does have a weird Tetris system going on, doesn't he, Pickle Dog? I know, I should have a lava room in my castle. Exactly right. I mean, it would probably heat the rest of the castle really well. People don't talk about that when they talk about lava rooms. Get out of the way, Dirk! Oh no, what's happening? I'm just dodging little geysers of acid or sulfur or something? Get out of the way. You got this dirt. <laughs> I love the doo doo doo. Yeah, dying repeatedly is the gameplay. Super Gamer Podcast. That's that's what everyone's experience is. Okay, here's the reverse version of this, I guess. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Says dirt. Cleared it. Oh, this is great. How wonderful is the uh, concept of this like floating robo horse? And how many questions does it raise about the setting of this game? <laughs> Ooh, I haven't noticed if his scabbard changes sides in the reverse version. Good question. Oh, this is an old favorite. Ye boulders. <laughs> you cannot dodge you boulders. Here we go. Ye rapids. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> you whirlpools. Not that. See, this part you can actually predict what button you're supposed to push. This seems more fair than a lot of the game. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I hit the wrong button at the very end. His little yelps are wonderful, aren't they? I mean, this is a beautifully done game. Except for the part where it's just like an agony to play. It does. I would agree, Super Gamer Podcast. This looked like magic in 1983 to like walk into a arcade with Donkey Kong and Pac-Man, and then there's a machine over there that's just like showing a, a full-on cartoon. I remember it was just mind-blowing to me. Okay, you did it, Dirk. Oh, this again, huh? Ooh. I think he makes ape-like sounds. Uh-oh. Oh, his foot got trapped. That's horrible. Okay, we made it through. <laughs> Lava. Laser disc was always supposed to be the future, right? All right. 
We've already had that room once. I'll save you. What's happening? Uh-oh. <laughs> I went for the diamond. <laughs> this is great. The blast of wind. Then the suction back in. Mm. Oops. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Yeah, Nathan, this is like the original Souls game. In a world where we should compare everything to Dark Souls, this game deserves to be compared to Dark Souls, right? Okay, let's keep going. We got this. I don't know how many levels there are of this Ding Dang game. By the time you reverse a bunch of levels. Snake. Jump. Jump. Nope. Wrong button. Off to a good start on this lap. No. Sword. Jump. 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 Hmm. Whoa. Now let's move dirt. Mm. <laughs> it says dirt. Nope, got the button. <laughs> oh no, that was brutal. Okay. Mm. Jump back. Jump ahead. Jump down. Jump over here. Hey, that did look painful. Hey, it's this room again. Remember this room? Only the pants at Manchel Pass. And spatter, right? <laughs> I still love that spatter. It may be my favorite thing in the game. It's like you just got through a deadly, deadly room and now here's a spatter. Oh man, batted. You got batted hard. Okay, sword the bats. <laughs> All right, we're making great progress, team. Oh yeah, same here. Like, I never saw this much of the game, Nick. <laughs> I mean, this would have required, I think, easily 20... No, 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 no. Let me rework that. I would say it would have taken me $50 worth of quarters as a kid to get to where we are right now, if ever. Because I was a pretty dumb kid. It wasn't like I was going to memorize this stuff. Oh, there you go, Dirk. Oh, man. This is bat country. Man, look at that big guy. The deaths are very worth it, aren't they? Okay. Hey, it's this again. Which way will I have to jump off this time? And another leap. Nope, straight to safety. Hmm. What happened? I didn't see a prompt. Oh, uh. <laughs> so some sort of magical... We're building a... Nice closet. That was a nice closet. Thank you. I'm glad someone here is paying attention to the closet. That should be my job. Well, my job and Grace's job. Hey! Retro OG san thank you so much for the raid. Welcome. Welcome, Raiders. I'm playing the Dragon's Lair trilogy and not doing great at it, but luckily, in a world of nothing but. <laughs> Nothing but continues. We can make this work. We're going to pause for just a second so I can say hello to everyone. Welcome, welcome, and thank you so much for the follow, uh, Kipper Geo. Oh, I loved this game as a kid too and never got anywhere into it. So I'm happy to be here. Hey, Rouge, good to see you. I'm playing, this is just the God Galaxy uh, version of the Dragon Age, um, Dragon Age trilogy on PC. Uh, it's also on Steam, the same version. 
Uh, so, hey, Elder Drake, this is nostalgia, right? This is too much nostalgia. Uh, but welcome, Raiders. Glad you could be here. What were you playing tonight, Retro OG Son? What are you coming off of? Oh, Space Ace. I may play some Space Ace tonight if we can finish Dragon's Lair. So, it's, po it's in this collection as well. So, it could lie in our future. Okay, get down the hallway. Swing at that guy. Get further down the hallway. Swing at that guy. And get on out of here. Oh, the SSI Gold Box games. You know, I played so many of those back in the day, and I don't think I ever managed to finish one, but I loved them so much. Just the idea of a game that had something resembling like a robust D&D &D rule set was enough to make me a happy kid back at the time. Okay, this is fun. Again, this is an interesting room to have in your castle. Keep running, Dirk. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Glad you could be here tonight. Raiders, I'm Jess, by the way. I mostly play retro games. I play a lot of retro point-and-click adventure games. That's sort of my bread and butter here, but I like to mix it up with a little bit of everything. So, glad you could join me tonight. Where I'll just repeat this same mistake over and over again. <laughs> hey, Todd, hey, Steph, good to see you. The color ballroom adds a lot of resale value. You're right, people are looking for these these days. They want an ensuite master bathroom and they want a ballroom. <laughs> okay, wrong button right off the bat. I clearly can't talk and push buttons at the same time, which I feel like is the minimal qualification to be a streamer, is pushing buttons and talking. <laughs> pushing buttons and talking at the same time. Pajama Sam someday may be on the list. Okay, at the end, remember to push up, Jess. That's your move. There it is. I am using a keyboard, it is so much easier. Here's the Lizard King. We have a magic purse that's dropping gold everywhere. There's so many great ideas in this game. But like, I'd love to see explored with a little bit more narrative. Whoa, get out of the way. Oh, what a valiant fight. Yes, I'm using a keyboard, and I think it's probably making things so much easier. Okay, take out this mystical blue morning star. The green anvil once again. The spear. Pop up here. We get the reverse angle of this from last time we got this level. I do hope that eventually this is just going to take me to the final level. I'd... Man, that looks like a jungle book snake. Ah! Not today, snakes. Ooh, tacker to the back. Dirk having a bad day. That's how he earned his name. Ooh. I thought like that'd be the exact look on my face if a little goblin guy <laughs> threw a dagger into my back. Okay, up the stairs, Dirk. Okay, more goblin-y guys. Sweet. That was a big ouchie. I creep pickled dog. Back country again. <laughs> Save me! Oh, you know I will. Oh, no, this. We're back in Tetris land. This inexplicable level. Yeah, it really does just remind you how great old 2D animation can look, doesn't it? Save me! <laughs> Sorry, Mario, be a princess in another castle. That's right, there's a lot of princess in another castle action happening in this game. I think, oh man, I think this is reversed again. I'm not sure, but I think this is another 
another level they've uh, flipped the animation on to add content. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's just so much character in every frame. <laughs> Take that, Black Knight. Oh, look at that great stairway. This looks like an important place. Oh no, what's happening? Oh no! I got so caught up in what was happening that I forgot to play the game. Which is a pretty common problem with the animation here is I just want to sort of watch it. There we go. Look at that score going up. Are we here? People, I think this may be the final level. Mm-hmm. Says Dirk. Oh man, this is big, uh, big smog action. There's Daphne. I believe Daphne may be the first time I remember seeing what might be considered pinup art as a child. <laughs> that was clearly, I was clearly distracted by it here. Daphne may have been my first video game crush, but when you consider what uh, most video game characters looked like in 1983, that's not exactly high praise. Okay. Gotta get the game face on. Yeah, the collapsing skeleton animation is very good. Okay, what I do, what I do, what I do. Oh man, that one's quick. Yeah, big crap factory. Yeah. Imagine making it here in rain out quarters. That literally sounds like the worst thing that could happen to a human being. Okay. Good job, Dirk. Oh. Big smog action going on here. Yes, grab those goblets. <laughs> to slay the dragon, use the magic sword. You got it. <laughs> oh, this is great. Okay. We dodged some claws. Nicely done, Dirk. <laughs> oh, this is this is intense. Please tell me the next move is Swing Sword. <laughs> Daphne likes it. Hey, Valiant Cheese! She sure does see you in distress, you're at fault. Oh. Did I just beat Dragon's Lair? Everyone, we did it. We did it. All your quarters are belong to me. <laughs> we beat Dragon's Lair with only, um, I don't know if anyone's keeping track, about 900 continues. <laughs> GG. <laughs> and now it's my lair. That's right, Zach. Stay out of my lair. <laughs> Thank you, Rouge. Thank you, everybody, for the GGs. <laughs> Just in time to see the end. Hey, Matawi, great timing. It turns out the Dragon's Lair was just a hoard of gold after all. We did it, right? It just sort of ends after all that. You're right. Well, now, I think we owe it to ourselves. Maybe not to go straight to Dragon's Lair 2, Time Warp. It's just a jump to the left. And maybe instead, let's explore Space Ace. The science fiction counterpart to Dragon's Lair. And by the way, if you're just joining us, welcome to the stream. Glad you could be here. 
We're having a lot of fun with a classic game. <laughs> this should be good stuff. The fate of humanity's in our hands. Oh, crap. We... Let's give that a track video. See what this game's all about. Space Ace, defender of justice, truth, and the planet Earth. Ace is being attacked by the evil Commander Borg. Hold your fire! Borky. Borky. Earth beans must surrender to me. No way, Borf, old buddy. Oh! Ah, I've been hit! By the Infanto Ray. Earth beans must surrender to me. <laughs> Struggle with Dexter to regain his manhood. Destroy the Infanto Ray. <laughs> regain his manhood. Defeat the evil Borf. Hey, Borf. <laughs> Come on, Kimberly, let's go. I've been hit. Ah! Be valiant, space warrior. The fate of Earth is in your hand. Oh, crap. Oh, man, this is really good. Wow, someone at your arcade retro who could play these games on with just their eyes closed. Yeah, I don't think I ever saw anyone who was just, like, really top-notch at these games. I'm trying to think if that's something... Yeah, I don't think so. I th can you just watch game? Can you literally just turn it on and let it play itself? <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Um, so yeah, like none of this I've ever seen before. Um, yeah, I really and I, I spare. <laughs> I've never gotten to watch the end before just now either. Yeah, we have his lost manhood. We'll restore it. Don't, don't you worry. Okay, which color do you think is the active button right now? Is the active button gold or is the active button gray? I've lost track. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's gray, which seems really counterintuitive. Oh, alright. Okay. Move beeps, move god, arcade cabinet off, difficulty. Cadet. I'm assuming that's the lowest. Ooh, heavy metal on Blu ray. I've never seen heavy metal, but I love the aesthetic um, when it pops up elsewhere. I'm a big fan of references to heavy metal. Close main bay. Close main bay. <laughs> Uh oh. Yes. Through my power. <laughs> There's Borf's ship. Close main bay. I love the closed main bay bit for some reason. Close main bay. <laughs> His grunts are wonderful. Oh no! Oh, Borf. Oh, I'm terrible at this. Hey, take care, Retro. So glad you could come. Thanks again for the raid. I appreciate it. Glad you could be here. Hope to see you again. There's I'll check out some of your streams. Uh-oh. Okay, let's get buff. Shoot our laser. Do heroic lasery stuff. Right? Ah! Close main bay. This game has an amazing soundtrack. It's too bad we'll never see any more of it than this. Get ripped. There you go. That's what we're talking about. Oh no. Why'd I get non buff again? I like being buff. Okay, we're in our ship. Nothing bad can happen now. 
close main bank. Kimberly, come in. Are you okay? Oh, sure. I'm just kidnapped by aliens, that's all. I'll <laughs> save you, Kimmy. Get me out of here! <laughs> oh my gosh, this is Retrowave. It's the greatest thing ever. Why isn't this my entire, like, Twitch overlay and, and presence? <laughs> is that Katie Seagal? It's valiant. It sounded a little bit like Katie Seagal, didn't it? Now I desperately want to know. <laughs> this is great. Oh my god. I never got anywhere in Space Ace. Uh-oh. Kimberly, come in. Are you okay? Oh, sure. I'm just kidnapped by aliens, that's all. <laughs> I'll save you, Kimmy. <laughs> Get me out of here! Well, that does sound like Katie Seagal, though. <laughs> Please, someone find out who did Kimberly's wow. voice. I kind of miss Closed Main Bay. Closed Main Bay. Whoa! Space Station, request permission to land. Lorna Cook. Okay, Aha, interesting. Wow. Whoa! Surrender, you coward. Aha! Borf is here. <laughs> is it just me? Or does this sound like if John Mulaney uh, were... <laughs> We're voicing an outer space geeky uh, hero. This is wonderful. <laughs> what happened to the colored ballroom in the future? Yeah, this is this is what the colored ballroom evolved into. Wow. Surrender, you coward. Never. Borf is here. Borf is here. Whoa. Ah. Seal off all exits to level one. <laughs> Seal off all exits. Whoa. Whoa. He got big butt first. Wow. Dexter! Get me out of here! Dexter? His name's Dexter? Surrender, you coward. Aha! Borf is here! Mm. Alert! I'll identify personnel on level one. <laughs> He's got dumps like a truck. Truck, truck. Thighs like what? What, what? They should move your butt. Butt, butt. <laughs> I'm big and buff now. I wonder if it's painful every time this happens to him. Oh, far out. Dexter! Get me out of here! I'll try! No guarantees! <laughs> oh, wow, she was an animator, too. Interesting. <laughs> oh, that was so good. Close main bay. Yes. Get energized. So I think there are multiple paths here if you choose not to energize at the energized moments. Oh, I don't know that- far out. Oh no. Better to have been a giant himbo and died than to live and never been a giant himbo at all. Always be energizing. You <laughs> if you have the option. To be a big buff space guy. You want to be a big buff space guy. Speaking of which, there could be more space guy content on the way soon, just to tease a little bit. Oh, far out. Oh, far out. You will lose. Oh, man. You see, Nick, you say apropos of nothing. But honestly, <laughs> thank you, Sheldon, for that real shake. <laughs> you say apropos of nothing, but honestly, the only thing I care more about than retro video games are Cheddar Bay Biscuits. So I would actually like to hear more about that in the other great video game. But please tell me, did you go with like the store bot? Because I know that like Red Lobster sells 
uh, its own Cheddar Bay biscuits uh, in stores, or are these completely uh, made from scratch? Did you go sailing on the on the Cheddar Bay to collect ingredients for it? Ooh, from scratch. Put the recipe in the Discord. You sir are a hero. You will lose. <laughs> Everyone, join the Discord. You can find the link right below chat. You want to get this recipe? You don't want to miss it. Oh, nope. Far out. <laughs> hey, Farrell, great to see you. Howdy, welcome. We're playing Space Ace. We finished Dragon's Lair, and now we've moved on to Don Bluth's other classic, Space Ace. Basically, a series of quick time events designed to suck quarters out of poor children's pockets. Whoa. Uh oh, I'm a tiny boy again. Totally not Roger Wilco. Hey, oh, it's you. Nothing like this. Nothing about this screams Roger Wilco. He hasn't jantered once. Ooh. <laughs> okay, here we go. Nope. <laughs> Just burned horribly again. <laughs> Surprise, Transformers. Right when you don't expect them, the Transformers get you. They are robots in disguise. <laughs> Thank you, Todd. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to the stream, everybody. If you're just joining us, glad you could be here. Having so much fun with this uh, this tonight. It's uh, it's a blast, as always. Glad you could be here. If you're new to the channel, consider throwing a follow in my direction if you enjoy what you see. If you're an old friend, please don't unfollow. That would really hurt my feelings. So, just glad you could be here. <laughs> Man, it's like sound wave just came out of nowhere. Get him. Get him, Dexter. The space ace. This is so great. This is just chaos. Oh no! Fall not fat. <laughs> oh wow. Ooh. University of Michigan has a massive gaming library. Oh, man. I've actually talked to some people at my university about setting up a gaming library, but... Oh, no! Why'd it leave? No! We lost our progress! What happened? No! Not like this! Okay, we can get back to where we were. I, I memorized all of those steps, but Paul, not Pat, redeemed story time with Jess, so... This is an important uh, part to st uh, to pause on. Um, I remember vividly where I first played uh, Dragon's Lair. And I think where I first saw Space Ace. It was in, uh, it was in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, um, at an arcade called uh, Fanny Farkles. Uh, Fanny Farkles had... Uh, an arcade with tons of uh, video games. And up front, they had a snack bar that served um, smoked sausages with like grilled peppers and onions. They sort of had like a flat top grill. And one of my favorite things to do when I would uh, go to Gatlinburg on trips with my family would be uh, to go to Fanny Farkle's, uh, cash in all of my money for tokens, play video games for an hour or so, and then uh, then eat one of those incredibly greasy giant smoked sausages on a bun. And I was searching around today and actually found one of the things I really love most looking back about, uh, about Franny Farkles is their tokens were called Franny Farkles Funny Money. And I was able to find a photo of one. So there it is. There's Fanny Farkle's Funny Money from Gatlinburg, Tennessee. <laughs> Just imagine a, uh, a sack full of those carrying around. It's Fanny Farkle's Funny Money. Uh, the whole thing was done up like a very fancy Victorian lady, uh, which you can see on the, on the coin there. But uh, 
I'm almost certain I still have some of those in uh, in a box somewhere because I'd always come home from vacation with like three extra tokens or something. But uh, yeah, Franny Farkle's funny money. It was at Franny Farkle's where I first played Dragon's Age, and I think I first saw Space Ace. Was Franny Farkle Missy and here? Yes, canonically, uh, Missy and here, just like Franny Farkle's. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's see if we can get back in here. Oh wait, we can continue. Haha, -ha, who's the idiot now? Not me. Is this really where we were? This doesn't seem right. Touche, he said. These ports feel real, real janky. I mean, the game itself runs pretty well, but everything around it, all the, uh... Oh no! It's Nega Scott. Oh, horrible drowning. Whoa, whoa, Kenny! You wear your dark side. <laughs> Man, that is a quick one. Kimberly, why has she been our dark side all along? Kenny, you wear your dark side. <laughs> Coward. Man, that is a tight window to get that one off. Like, I got sitting here spamming it. You wear your dark side. Why is Dark Dexter in his kid form? This is a great question that more people should be asking. Uh -huh. Oh no, he's got buff version too. rolling head. Close Bang Bay. That cure slash A. I was thrown by that too. Oh, we're in a cool race now. <laughs> Ooh, we got slightly murdered in that race. Ooh, Game really psychedelic here at the end. It really is. That's the second biggest rolling head I've ever seen. Thank you, OSU. I feel like that might be what happened if I ever Whoa. faced my dark side in hand-to-hand -hand combat Next too, though. I feel like it's going to go a lot like that. No. <laughs> Yikes! Yikes. Oh, man. You cannot win. <laughs> Maybe I can't win. Dexter! Nope. <laughs> Failure to launch. Okay, team. I've got this. There's a reason I'm a pro gamer. And there it is again. I was afraid somebody might not have seen it last time in case anyone was just coming in. Yeah, checkerboard flooring. Definitely timeless. You're right, Valiant. Oh, I can't get that one. I got energized there right at the end. Whoa! Like, I feel like you can just about put most of these levels in the middle of Dragon's Lair, and they'd make about as much sense as half the Dragon's Lair. Oh, man! You're late. Next Thanks. I'll walk. Hey, guys. Did, uh... A giant pig just show up and eat us? Felt like a giant pig may have just shown up and eaten us. Hmm. I don't know what to make of all that. Whoa, really, Ooh. this is where it starts Dexter. back? This is quite a sequence. Whoa. Nope. You cannot win. Just right up and Whoa. ate you. Whatever do that giant pig though? Okay, get ready. I love how he does like the re-entering the ramp. Thanks. I'll walk. Kimberly's great. Dexter, the infant ray is about to be fired at Earth. Not on my watch. Are those tribbles? In the center of the complex. Can you get us in there? Yes. 
Lug nuts. Dwarf know I'm here? Yes, and he's geared to battle. Lug nuts. Let's say we shoot Dwarf with his own infant. Why, yes. Let's say we have dinner tonight. Get serious. I am. <laughs> Watch out, Dwarf, old buddy. Here we come. Dexter, call me Ace, huh? Call me Ace. <laughs> lug nuts. Precious lug nuts. Oh, man. Dwarf. Come on. Use the aqua booms. Ah! Use the aqua loop. He's in the tank. There's a lot, huh? <laughs> Dwarf is doing all he can, but that don't stop us. Nope. Oh man. It's space water ain't even gonna use things. We were looking this up earlier, Epic, and uh, it was not Casey Doll, but it sounds a lot like her. Yeah, I have no idea how you can play this in the arcade without in the, tank. the prompts telling you which way to move. Because even with the prompts, it's not super easy. <laughs> oh no, boar. All right, we got buff. Oh no. Yeah, there's so much animation in just a short bit of time. I imagine, like, if this were CGI, that would take, like, three months to animate that, to, to like, render that ten seconds. Ooh! Shock rod to the gut. I think he did just call us to leave. Okay, Borf. Game over for you. Dexter! Got it, Kimmy. This is a tough spot. Dexter, the Infanta Ray is. Take that. Ooh, I bought the Oh no! Oh no! Oh, we got so far. Glug, glug, glug. Oh no! This is intense. Sorry, you guys, I'd settle in for the next 30 minutes or so while I try to do this again. We may never see Dragon's Lair 2. Hey, <laughs> Dexter, you got this. Nope, you don't got this. Hey, that one sucked. That last frame was really good, wasn't it? Yeah, not having load times makes this a lot more bearable. That and obviously continues. The real secret to success. No, not today, boy. Okay, get buff. Right here, Jazz. Go him with the pugil stick. I'm on it. Nope, not on it. <laughs> Welcome, oh. Natwins. Glad you could be here. <laughs> yeah, just both of them like, come on, man. You got this far. Now this is what you do. Okay. We gotta get serious. We gotta get serious, everyone. Is everyone out there serious? I need you to join hands. 
and he values support. Energize. I'd like to know, like, how he energizes and what it means. Like, what is his deal, though? Dexter! Dexter, the infant raised. Take that. Oh no! I might have to jump up! Oh. The Infanta Ray! <laughs> nope, ooh, man. <laughs> oh, this is bananas. Surely this is the last sequence. Okay. There's the good stuff. Dexter! Okay. Up. Down. Dexter! Dexter, the infant raised. I know. Take that. Okay, here's where things usually get bad. Hey, Sack Dynamite, welcome, welcome Raiders. Glad you could be here, you're here just in time to watch me at the end of Space Ace. What started as a Dragon's Lair stream turned into a Space Ace theme as we finished Dragon's Lair. Welcome. So glad you could be here. This is a good chance to pause and welcome Raiders. Uh, hey everyone, what were y'all playing tonight, Zach? What's been going on over at your channel? Thank you so much for the raid. Yes, Dragon's Lair to Space Ace, then hopefully back to Dragon's Lair for Dragon's Lair 2. Fingers crossed. Hey, thanks so much for the follow, Azura Knights. Space Ace Raid! <laughs> Welcome, Azura Knights. Glad you could be here. Uh, I love this game, too. I've only played the arcade version. This is my first time getting past, like, the first or second screen, but yeah. But welcome. Thank you so much for the raid, Zach. Glad you could be here. Oh, play Mario Kart. Oh. Are we talking like original Mario Kart? Or are we talking one of the newer versions? Glad you could be here. If you're new to the stream, I'm Jess. I play retro games. Lots of retro point and clicks, but I do a little bit of everything. I'm sort of a retro variety guy. Up, down. We got you, Kimmy. Don't worry. We got a plan in place. Dexter, the infant raise. I know. Take that. Okay. No. 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 Thank you for the follow, Zach. I appreciate it. Oh, goodness. Oh, on the Switch. Great, great, great. I really dig uh, the Switch version of Mario Kart. My daughter and I put in a lot of time on it. Okay, get buff. Do the thing. Have the fight again. We can do it this time. I know, I know, I'm coming. Run, run, take that. No, 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 no. Yeah, how did anyone beat this without props? It can't be possible. Kimmy. 
you did. You have great hair now. This is true. I mean, if I had to choose. Yeah, and usually these weren't even like one quarter games. They like jacked up the price for this uh, this cabinet at most arcades. Like, there's a good chance this would be a fifty or seventy five cent play. We're just gonna keep doing this, baby. Someday, someday we'll get lucky. Nope. Not today. Yeah, it's barely a second, right? Massive amounts of quarters. Cheaper go see a real movie. Absolutely. I mean, probably the reality is there is someone on Twitch who like streams this on the regular and does it without the move props because you can turn that off in the home version too. And probably just knows this game and would be a marvel to observe, but that ain't me, babe. Clearly. Mm. <laughs> I like the one where they die of falling into a pit of trouble happily. They just giggle to death. Okay. We gotta get it this time. I feel like we're close to the end here. I really want no. Oh no. I mean, worse. That's how you know you're playing a really high quality game. Is when you get progressively worse with every attempt. Okay, energized. This jerk is pretty perfect. Okay. Oh, wow. A live action Dragon Slayer film starring Ryan Reynolds? What? <laughs> oh, man. Space Baby the end. Okay. We didn't do it. <laughs> Let's try this again. Okay. We've got to get it. I've got to get this. i got to get this. This is everything I've dreamed of my entire life, being to play this much Space Ace practically for free. I mean, this is a still on Steam at almost any price. But you consider how many quarters it would take to get this much content otherwise. I got gotcha. you. Nope, don't got gotcha. you. Yeah, it went a different way. It seems to have made no difference. There were two options there, and I chose the other one this time, and it sent me to the exact same place. So, that's nice game design. I mean, less far every time. Yeah. 
want to raise. I'll get you. Take that. Okay, this is where it gets hairy usually. Run, run. Take that. <laughs> oh, Dexter! <laughs> Isn't he adorable? Can we keep him? Tommy <laughs> is, huh? Hey! <gasps> we finished Space Ace! Oh man, he got baby fine. Take that, Impato Ray! <laughs> Oh wow! Hey, Cyborg Pride. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I would. I, yeah, I was just like a a live feed of Pride Riddles playing Dragon Slayer. <laughs> there was stuff in a lamp. Yeah, that is big, uh, genie energy there, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Ooh, I'm gonna take a second to rest the old hands. <laughs> Welcome everybody who uh, who dropped in. So glad you could be here. Um, I'm having a blast playing. Thank you everyone for the raids along the way. Um, again, if you're new to the stream, I'm Decaf Jedi. I like to play retro adventure games, but retro everything. Uh, glad you could be here. I think now that we've completed Dragon's Lair and Space Ace, the only thing left to do at this point is try Dragon's Lair 2. Close pain bay. It really is fun. <laughs> I've never, uh, I don't even think I've ever seen a Dragon's Lair 2 machine. <laughs> Thank you, Nick, for slapping the new BMX Legend sticker. As you guys all know, I'm a BMX Legend, and uh, that sticker is there to recognize. If you want to slap your own stickers, you can just hover right over the video window for a few bits. <laughs> you can be part of the, uh, part of the stream. Ooh, a copy of Brain Dead 13. I don't even know that game. Who <laughs> cares about Space Ace compared to a BMX Legend? This is so true. Okay, here's a. Oh, this is charming right from the title screen. Let's see what the attract mode looks like. Wait a second. Ooh. Pirate animation. Hmm, let's do the attract video. Then I'm curious what the pirate animation is like. Dragon's Lair. Time Warp. Kidnapped? Oh, Daddy! Idiot! <laughs> Spirited away to a wrinkle in time by the evil wizard Mordrock, Daphne will be forced to marry the wicked Mordrock unless Dirk can save her. My Daphne kidnapped? Mommy's gone. Transported by a bumbling old time machine, Dirk begins the rescue mission. Mine! Do it for the children. Once the Casket of Doom has opened, Mordrock will place the Death Ring upon Daphne's finger in marriage, and she will be lost forever in the Time Warp. For the children. <laughs> oh, man. What was the pirate animation, I wonder? Tell me more about this pirate animation. Oh. Some animatics. Oh, this is great. I want to play the whole game in this mode. <laughs> more track, more deck. You know how it is. So I wonder if that last 16x is like 16 frames of flashing sword, or... <laughs> Rope lowers into place. Well, there's the pirate animation. <laughs> oh, these are all the deaths, I guess. Okay, very cool. I think it's time to play this sucker. 
Director's Cut? Whatever could that mean? I mean, what do we do here? Do we want Director's Cut? I guess? Let's try, let's try the Director's Cut. Here it is. You're seeing it here for, for the first time anywhere. It's the Director's Cut. With extra cuts. Kidnapped. I definitely kidnapped again. Idiot. Don't cough. You better find my daughter. Oh, man, mother in laws, am I right? <laughs> Oops. Oh man, we got eaten by the jungle book snake. Okay, this is wild stuff. Nope. Oh! Oh, that's terrifying. Murder castle safer than mother in law. Got her. Hold still so I can kill you. You must be Dirk. Dirk the Daring. Fetch me a drink from the well. Daphne's lost in the halls of time. A is that a Scottish snake? Under a spell. Yeah, is that a Scottish Please snake? Lad, hurry, we'll get her back. Defeat the foul wizard. My brother in a place. There's <laughs> just so much going on. It's more than a human being could possibly comprehend. So, dear brother, you bring Dirk here. You collection as clanking piece of junk. Boil in the mud, you meddling old fool. Jack will be helpless once you've been sucked. <laughs> oh my, ooh. This is something else, team. Snake McSlither. So, dear brother, you bring Dirk here. You collection as clanking piece of junk. Boil in the mud, you meddling old fool. Jack will be helpless once you've been sucked. <laughs> you are oh man. <laughs> this is terrifying. Oh, get her. <laughs> is Daphne uh, like death cursed of some sort? Is she now a dark elf? Oh my gosh! Hmm. hmm. Looks like I died. <gasps> okay, I forgot to breathe during most of that, y'all. <laughs> oh man, I do love Turks. Hmm. What could be happening here? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so we get to do all this again, huh? Beat. Meddling old fool. Jack will be helpless once you've been sucked. <laughs> you are Daphne. <laughs> Go get her. I do like his awesome wings. This whole thing feels like a wild fever dream. Oh man. Again, exact same place. This game is a workout. It's just taxing every uh, every ounce of strength I have. Hmm. 
I wish I hadn't died. <laughs> Says Dirk. Yeah, I got it this time. I can feel it. My <laughs> Get the sword! Hurry, son! Hurry! Daphne's mine! Farewell, you fool! Farewell, you fool indeed. Oh, man. There's like a swamp dinosaur? Use the time machine, Dirk. There you go. <gasps> like it's like watching Cartoon Two X. It really is. Through the glass. Good tonight. He got Alice in Wonderland. Quick boy, through the glass. Wait, what happened? <laughs> This is time supposed to have 24 back abs, probably. Good tonight. Can you join us in a fight? Make way for the queen, you see what I mean? Wee! Stop that bouncing! Dirk as Alice is very good. I love it. Princess Daphne is mine! After that rabbit! Well, I'm right now! Don't mind if I do! After that rabbit! Oh, wow. So here's all of Alice in Wonderland in like 30 seconds. Good tonight. Can you join us in a fight? Make way for the queen, you see what I mean? Stop that bouncing. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things. Speed Alice. How would you do it about the props? I don't know. I don't know. Like, whose brain could watch these cartoons quickly enough to then suss out what direction it wants you to jam your, your arcade stick into? It's madness. It's pure madness. Quote me on that. It's going to be my Steam review. Madness. Pure madness. This is for everyone who thought Alice in Wonderland was a little too sensible and reasonable and wanted to be more bizarre and troubling. I love the tiny little dragon. It's not so tiny anymore. Oh my gosh, this Cheshire cat is terrifying. Quick boy, through the glass. It's the second biggest Cheshire cat head I've ever seen. Oh my goodness. I'm not high enough for this either. I'm afraid I may never be able to sleep again. Like, what if this is just it for me? What if from here, like in a few weeks, I just die of insomnia from all of the visual input that I'm receiving? Oh my goodness. This is unbelievable. Okay. Time for terrible Cheshire Cat experience. I can't even, like, 
process what's happening. Okay. Talking about a set piece, huh? So that was just one room. That's. I think the cat was reciting Jabberwocky. <laughs> They're just jumping out. No visitors. <laughs> Back. Stop right there. <laughs> He died of cherubim. There he can stand on no clouds, you big goop. Back. I have the Charles Stop Nelson Riley there. vibes going on here. One more step and you're finished. Ooh. Oh. This is two. This is Dragon's Lair 2, and it is bonkers on a level that I never expected. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, NBA Dang, let me scroll back up here and take a look at that. Thought back correctly for a little bit. I've decided these kinds of reaction times are what you'd expect from someone playing, say, an arcade side scroller. It just doesn't translate well to these quick time events. I would agree. Yes. You came in just in time to see uh, a large woman uh, hug me to death. I don't know what's happening anymore. Go away. No visitors. Back. Like, Dragon's Lair 1 is Just weird. Right this game so far One seems to be taking it to a completely different level. Oh no. Go away. No visitors. Back. <laughs> Stop right there. A time machine. Like, where do you think he traveled in this time machine? What year do you think this is? This is the Garden of Eden. Oh. Yeah, the don't eat thing should have tipped me off. Aw oh, man, Dirk just created original sin. Way to go. Was that Dumbo that just flew by? Uh, nice follow man you got there, Dirk. y'all. This is happening now. Oh no! Oh! Giant Sapper Giant Mozart. Or is this Giant Beethoven? This is Beethoven's fifth, right? I don't know. Not fancy lab. Daphne's mine. Just 
they don't talk about how big Beethoven was. Like, in the books, he's just like, they really focus on his music. But he was physically imposing and had a flying piano. Did he just turn to Elton John or something? Did that just happen? Did I just see that out of the corner of my eyes? Like he had a Elton John coat or something? <laughs> Okay, y'all, I don't want to overstep myself before I've had to finish this, but is Dragon's Lair 2 the greatest game ever made? Like, I'm low-key starting to think maybe Dragon's Lair 2 is the greatest game ever made. Sean happened. Okay, good, 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 good. Oh, wait, I wasn't paying attention. Hmm, we appear to be in ancient Egypt. I wonder if there'll be some sort of mummy action going on here. The so voice beckons me forward. Okay, Dirk, what you got? Oh, spider dude. Okay, I need to I need your answer for just one second. <laughs> Why do quick time events even exist anymore when the art form <laughs> reaches pinnacle of this game? Sith Princess, that is a very good question. <laughs> I'm out of breath and not even playing. I think I actually have it easier than you guys because I'm just watching the prompts. Like, I've only seen most of the animation in my peripheral vision. So, so y'all are the ones having to, like, absorb all of this stuff that's happening. Nope. Oh, man. What's worse, falling to your death, being eaten alive by spiders, or being eaten alive by spiders as you fall to your death? <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a game to let wash over you. Like, I think you need just the right amount of CBD oil to really appreciate this one. Okay, rolly, rolly, rolly. Different spiders. Dirk, I'm in here. Hope it's not a trick. Oh no! Oh. We found her this time, boy. Oh really? You have to actually get treasures to win the game? Oh no. Have I done that yet? Oh no. It's absolutely incredible technical achievement. Yeah. <laughs> I think you might be on the Southern NBA day. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, even like experienced as intended, this is just a masterpiece of what the fuckery. If you'll pardon my French. Oh man, I think I just dropped my first F-bomb on stream. Oh no. It's all downhill from here. It was when we accidentally did Original Sin earlier. It, it let it out into the world. Okay, you got this, Dirk. <laughs> I'd like to think maybe I'm getting slightly better at quick time events, but certainly none of the evidence would suggest that. Dirk, I'm in here. 
Jump down. Jump down. Ugh! Why is nothing just simple? The segments in this game are so much longer than the previous one. Like, you really have to get these sequences going. Some of the ones in the first game were just a few button presses. These are little mini-movies. Like, every one's a boss battle. My nose is itching. That was nearly a critical mistake. <laughs> Got him! Okay. What? No. No. Disgrace DMX. BMX. I'm also a disgraced DMX legend, but mostly a disgraced BMX legend. I've been banned from my Christian server. Oh, he's following the prompts not enough. I guess it isn't. I have to do something else, but what else is there to do? <laughs> what else is there? Kidnapped. Wait. I'm definitely kidnapped again, idiot. I have to go all the way back here and figure out what I missed? <laughs> what in the world? Did she say I raised a princess who married a frog or to marry a frog? You can run, boy. You cannot hide. Arrow was just before the well. What well? You must be dirt. Dirt for daring. Fetch me a drink on the well. Oh, there's our Scottish snake friend again. I like how this game's never seen like a snake or spider that it didn't want to include. It's like the more the merrier. You saw a key. There's an arrow. When the jungle snake tries to. Oh, wow. When the spider appears, there's a bow too. How are you playing this? Good question. Um, I am playing this Sith Princess on uh, on keyboard. Um, this is the GOG version. It's the same as the version that's on Steam right now as well. So, yeah, it's, it's not a bad package. It's a trilogy pack that has Dragon's Lair 1, 2, and Space Ace. But I think that, yeah, with the arcade stick as I remember it, it was much more brutal. Now, here's the best feature that this collection offers. And it's under the extra section. <laughs> it's watch game. Probably be better with it off. Okay. Let's see how this whole thing looks. We're gonna do this the lazy way. I actually want to watch this thing. I can't believe it exists. It's come to this team. Oh, there was the arrow. There's the bow. I never saw those. Gaming. Gaming. You must be Dirk. Dirk for daring. Fetch me a drink on the well. Daphne's lost in the halls of time. A prisoner she's under a spell. Mm. Hasten, lad, hurry. We'll get her back. Defeat the foul wizard. Yeah, I'm so focused on the prompts at the bottom of the screen. That, like I said, I'm sort of seeing all the animation in my peripheral vision. And... All those atoms were just like flashing by like nothing. So dear brother, you bring Dirk 
here, you collagenous planking piece of junk. Boil in the mud, you meddling old fool. Jerk will be helpless once you've been sunk. This guy really reminds me a lot of uh, the evil queen from Snow White when she's in hag mode. Go get her! Poor Daphne. I can't wait to see how this ends. My hero. <laughs> I dirt just sinisterly staring at her. He seems to enjoy the violence. Why is she gray? I'm guessing some sort of curse would be my guess. That's an upsetting tongue. Okay, now this is the part I really want to watch carefully. Quick boy, through the glove. Oh, it's reversed. Good sir knight. Can you join us in a fight? Make way for the queen, you see what I mean? Whee! Stop that bouncing! Off for the head! Off for the head! Assassin! Princess Daphne is mine! <laughs> After that rabbit! Well, I don't. don't mind if I do! After that rabbit! <laughs> the reversing of the video is so fascinating to me. Was brilliant, the slighty toes, the tyrant, and bullying the way for Mimsy were the Borogos and the Mograz outbreak. Yeah, seeing it mirrored is definitely more troubling after being used to repeating it over and over again in the other direction. Wow. See, I didn't see any of the teapots or anything last time. I was just too locked in. Go away. No visitors. See, I missed that this was the Garden of Eden, even though it says step, Eden step literally right, right above the gate. One more step and you're finished. Ooh. <laughs> She's saying Adam as she chases him. Another good clue. Hang the on, forbidden. Here's our ticket to fame and fortune. Look here, I'll get you the princess when you bring Eve to me. It does feel like Don Bluth's Fantasia. That's a great way to put it. Oh no! My original sin. Yeah, team, I don't think I could have ever done this, it turns out. If I had to get those flashing atoms, it doesn't even tell you how to grab them, really. I think I would have never completed this, so it's relaxing watching it. I really want to see this segment, too. Yeah, it feels like bits of... Fantasia, it feels like bits of Sorcerer's Apprentice, it feels like bits of um, Sword in the Stone. It has, I mean, obviously, Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> the Elton John gag is so good. I bet it played back in the day too. Like an Elton John <laughs> or an Elton John gag. I imagine like audiences in 1985 or whenever this came out would have been like really into that gag. I push in your general direction. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. Did we finish the Egyptian section? Is this where we petered out? My brain's already just destroyed. Oh yeah, this is where it told us we couldn't go any further because we hadn't gathered our treasures. Okay, go for it, Dirk. Fight off those spatters. Roll down the ramp. Oh, there was the dagger. The Dirk, if you will, that we needed to grab. Go up and see the mummy. Dirk, I'm in here. Okay. This is a beautiful game, though. Yeah, apparently there's no animation for grabbing them. Who looked at this game and thought, Ah, oh, man, these Dragon Lair games are just way too easy. Let's add another element, and let's not signal it very clearly at the start. Players will definitely get it. <laughs> he dressed up. Like, he was just like, Ah, we'll trick Dirk. Unbelievable. Oh. Oh wait, is that literally the end of the game? And you want Daphne? Go get her. Okay, big Ursula vibes here. It's like Pig Ursula. Oh no! More body horror! <laughs> he should turn to a pretty princess or you throw the ring on him. You're exactly right, Sith Princess. It should be like Balzette rules, I feel like here. This is a this is a Balzette scenario. I'm just swatting away bats. You stupid bats. Let's kill some more of you. A few more quick time events. They'll cheer me up. <laughs> quick time events always cheer me up. Oh, he's us to contend with that mother-in-law. <laughs> Closed bay doors. Dirk, my hero. That's a whole lot of kids. <laughs> wow, that was pretty good. <laughs> okay, so we were just one scene away, but because we hadn't been collecting the items, <laughs> we don't get to see them. Okay, there was one other... Maybe, since we're just sort of like kicking back and enjoying at this point, maybe before I call it quits, I believe that there was a interview maybe on the special features on the original dragon's lair let's see what's going on in there where's the comment button it's a good question <laughs> oh wait or should we learn to draw dirt this sounds this sounds interesting how do you draw dirt though hope don bluth is getting ready to tell me how to draw dirt i'm gonna do has two characters in it and the two are dirt and the dragon singe now, Dirk is a little tiny character, and Dragon is a great big character, Singes. So, but I'm thanks for the follow, Matt Wins. I'll pull Dirk into the foreground so that he stays kind of big, and push the Dragon into the background. And I think just to get this thing to work, I'm going to um, 
sketch out how I can do this. This dragon is sort of looking at Dirk like that. You want uh, an S and then a more different S. Bring all the tail up around like this. I said consummate V's. And maybe the legs of the dragon. One big beefy arm. A wingling. So I think that's going to work. So the dragon, uh, what I just told you, I think is really relevant here. What's the dragon doing? Is he It's plausibly to Trogdor. To to get dirt. All of that becomes really relevant. So I, I think it looks like a beefy arm up there. Egg. So Dirk. If I turn him around and put our back to us, we're not going to see him too much. But what I could do is have him, he's just made a swing at the dragon, and he's really in the foreground up here. So I'll put his head there. Yes, it's for size. <laughs> arms like this. There's a sword. Derek has to constantly raid dragons, players, to support all 200 of his yeah. kids. Plausible. So he, I, I want to I do it in action, because somehow the action always looks better rather than just standing there. And we'll say he has just swung the sword like that, but the dragon mm. stepped back and he missed. So that, that gives me an idea of what the picture's gonna look like. Um, right now, I've got this down in this corner, so it looks like we're gonna probably have to take the little seal and put it over in this corner, but I think it works. So let's get um, let's get this singed dragon to work for us. Really important, I'm gonna just slightly detail again. Just trogdor it out. What I'm drawing here. You ready to burn an egg? Uh, eyes will be somewhere in there. <laughs> Bluthinating the country. The hard part about this dragon a lot of times is these big rims that are on his tummy. But once I kind of get the idea, then I, I can work with a little more confidence. Uh, I'm going to say the dragon is really, really angry or really fierce because it's going to make a better drawing, which means his hands are going to take on kind of a stiff look. I know that feeling. Shoulders. Shoulders up here. <laughs> Dragon shoulders. That's going to work great. Then <laughs> all the spines and all the decoration line just a little bit later. Let's see what Dirk's going to look like. That's right. Just draw a dragon. Just move your hand Towards in the pattern that would make an attractive dragon. His eyes. Looking up at the guy. So it's sort of like that. It would be his helmet. Is the Dirk nose. The dirt frown. <laughs> that works. And his shoulders. It's really hard with uh, with human characters. You have to get the anatomy just right, or anyone looking at it says, eh, "It doesn't look right," and they'll spot it immediately, even if they're not an artist. They'll spot it. Yeah, Paul, not Pat. This is a really good point. This is everyone's homework. I want to see on Twitter or in the Discord your own drawings of Turk and uh, the Dragon Singe. 24 hours. I'm not, let's do one hour. You're right, Paul. 24 is too much. I'm going to be careful with a little skirt not to put it on too soon because he's in motion. When a character's in motion, all the, all the what we call the secondary action things, which would be things like cloth, or hair. Or Too busy trying pin ups. All of those things move according to what the character is doing. Wow. So I'm not going to put this on yet. I'll just wait. I'll As someone who can't do art at all, on, right now I don't know. anyone who can do even something as simple as like that expression on Dirk's face is so like a magic to person to me. Look at how long this video is. Eyes and the mouth are always really important. There's a knob on top of his head, and the brows are always a little darker than everything else. <laughs> the cheeks of the dragon tell you, you know, what he's what he's doing. So I think the dragon has one of those mean kind of smiles on his face. The cheeks of the dragon is my favorite D and D module. Big nostrils, which you can see. When we were first learning how to draw this dragon, everybody had a lot of fun with it because we <laughs> we hadn't a clue. No one knows what a dragon really looks like, you know, unless you look at the Komodo dragons, and, and you just don't know. So you have to make something up. So Don Bluth like, has right a point. The bottom of his chin, these two great big warts with these little growths that come out of them, and we went up to the top of his head on the knot on top of his head and did the same thing. 
so that he has these appendages that come out of his head. And it may <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to back out of so this. Put, sort of like out of the same point right <laughs> we're going to put these big fans. Or should I? Is this great? Is this good content? Fins. Tell me in the chat. Is this good content? Yes. Need to learn how to draw bikini babes. That's what makes a great fantasy what epic. We use these for is whenever he looked like he was he had a burst of adrenaline, these things would open up and these would straighten out so that it gave us uh, little appendages that gave him expression. We thought we were so clever in those days. <laughs> we thought we were so clever in those days. Now I'm giving the regular dragon tongue right now rather than having to just spit the fire. I did already finish so, Space let's, Ace. Let's head into it was an adventure. The, um, the back of the dragon. He has all these really great looking spines on his back. Which drive animators crazy. <laughs> but they're all so part of his charm. If you go up here like this, you have to start putting all these little lines. Now these things tell you what the perspective of the dragon is. Since it looks like we're kind of upshot, I like to... This dragon's getting very good, huh? And make him go up. So Don Bluth is pretty good at art. Release, which I think helps. Now, he's <laughs> I have a tiger, guy, cheeks so of the dragon. Give him, you know, all the musculature that he needs to be a dragon. And also a little detail that I'm going to get more into later on. So he has all these little warts all over him. <laughs> Mm. So, there we go. Let's draw his chest. On the chest, I'm going to continue these. So far, I'm liking it. I think it's going to be good. Um, <laughs> I think it's going to be good, again, he says. Here's some of these little warts. Yeah, this dragon's working out. I don't know what those are. It just makes him look a little bit... I mean, look at those triceps. That's where you really see it. It's not the biceps. Those are just vanity muscles. That's a bad idea. It's but the triceps. A lot of people working together. So, you know, I've kind of got a straight over here with these curves. Those are playing against each other. And against the straight, here's another curve. But I don't want to parallel anything because parallel lines usually are, are boring things. And... Here we go. Let's get into the legs. <laughs> Again, since he is a uh, he's angry right now, I think mm -hmm. what we want to do is we want to get all of the the feet, the toes, the hands, the fingers, and all that to be very stiff looking, so that he's got them extended. And the claws on the end of them that'll it's going to make it look really really good. All right. Is this how to draw Dirk, how to draw the dragon? Great question. We were promised how to draw Dirk. And right now, Dirk is just like seven lines. It's big, fleshy legs. So don't be afraid if you're trying to draw this guy to make him kind of big and flat and fleshy, but also a real fleshy knee. I like that he's persisting in the fiction that somehow this is a tutorial that will help us learn how to draw. He's committing to the bit. As if, like, you know, it's like, oh, we'll just draw a perfect dragon leg, you know. There we go. And then on the spines, we won't see all the spines on the back anymore. You'll see some over on this side. And then they pick up once again when you see the top of his tail. And they're not all the way down. I've chosen to put them partially down, and then there's a little smooth part where maybe some have fallen off, and then there's a few more, and then there's a few more. And I'm using this tail to draw attention to Dirk, who's out here in the open. So this is going like this. Oh, absolutely, like Nick. Dirk. Yeah, Dirk's pose, like again, with almost no line work is perfect. Just, it's what you leave out yeah. sometimes that makes it look good. <laughs> Fireworks factory. Let's do the other hand up here. Yeah, when are they going to just fade this into a finished animation cell? So. It's almost a human looking hand, but, uh, but not. <laughs> this is foreshortened so there's the bicep here would be the elbow down here and then we decorate it with the few little warts Don Bluth has good fingernails alright let's finish off dirt for us we're almost there right there phones ringing in the background nice touch there we go 
Kirk is actually really fun to draw. And once you get the hang of him, um, I wonder when this was filmed. Sometimes I can't exactly talk why I'm doing some of the things, but <laughs> it's sort of an intuitive process after a while. So you get to know when the line is in the right place or it's not. Look at that Ticonderoga number two pencil. Because that's why we make mistakes. You just admit them, erase it, and go on. Um, all right. Now, Dirk. You have to think through this, you know, how is he grasping? Here's his hand, his, uh, his thumb goes around the other side. His other hand is upside down, and this is the thumb here. All right, and... So I'm liking that. Let's draw the hilt of the sword. This will tell us kind of how the sword angle is. There's the, <laughs> the knob on the end of the hilt of the sword. Now we have to draw... Sword knob. So, that's the technical name, Sword right. Knob. Now I'm ready to kind of put clothes on this guy. <laughs> and I know that... I'm ready to take clothes off this guy. He's looking good. Sword Knobs and Broomsticks. He's moving forward, so this trails behind like a secondary action. There's his other leg. There's his little skirt. If it looks like... At any time you don't like the way you've drawn this, just erase. And uh, as long as you're drawing with a fairly soft pencil. <laughs> That's how you do it. That's how you're a good artist. He has big, big legs on them. Almost if you don't like what you've done, erase and just do it right. He knows why he has no angles, but just accept it. <laughs> so there's your Dirk. There's now, your the Dirk. The thing of course, is these lines, speed lines, that indicate the swing that he just took. Oh, man. We'll it's really good. Shadow. We'll put him on the ground. And there you have Dirk and Singe. Okie doke. <laughs> That's a really good job. Yeah, I mean, in just a few lines. <laughs> Speed lines ruined it. You blew it. <laughs> All right, now we know. Let's see this interview. While we're at it, let's just let's milk this trilogy for all its content. Mm. I think the first, the, going way back in time was what I call the toilet paper version, which was a roll of cash register paper, and uh, it would just roll it forward and backwards like a player piano, and uh, there were hundreds of hand-painted pictures and text on each, uh, on this roll of cash register paper, and the computer would roll it to the one it wanted, stop, and then the light would light up behind, and that there was this dark smoke glass, so you couldn't see it until the light lit up. And so it was so mechanical it was, and computer. Yeah, mechanical and computer. How long uh, before? And, how long before you came to us? Was that was that going months before or a oh, year before? It's probably more than probably two years before. Wow. And then mm. um, then after that, you know, we took it to the toy companies, and they all loved it, and they had no idea how they would print that cash register paper. <laughs> they had none. They said, <laughs> we have no idea how we we could do this, how um, how we can manufacture it. And then, um, so I thought, well, and we came up with what I call the Rolodex. And uh, this thing was huge. This big I like when people in the animation biz wear their Hawaiian shirts for interviews. It's very, uh, it's, it seems to be an animator go-to. Giant Rolodex with, with double cards. And oh no, I broke it through these for my bad. of cards on each reel. A bad reference broke it and stop, and then either this there we light go. or that light would light up. Same thing with the smoke glass. And oh, tech and guy, there you go. Make your decision determined, weren't you? <laughs> well, I thought it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> then we came up with the first laser disc version, which was still pictures. The only we evolved because we were for any given scene, we might have five or six stills, and we had for the first time live voice and then that led to um to dragon slayer for the coin op you know, and we're saying okay well if we're going to do this for coin because we were also developing coin op radio. thank you so princess and we said well <laughs> if we're going to take this thing at that time it was called secrets of the lost woods and and that became dragon slayer and dragon slayer was just a working name 
and you know how that goes. <laughs> It's, it's stuck. stuck. <laughs> if you recall, we had demonstrations and things working uh, when you guys came out to, to show it to you. And, and um, I think the biggest point was when we saw the Secret of Nim, and I just <laughs> went, wow, this is an incredible, incredible uh, movie, film, because I, you know, I, forgot, I forgot that it was uh, an animated film. So you pitched the roller deck. And called you. <laughs> I still remember the day you and uh, Jim Pierce came to the studio, and when you guys left, we all looked at each other, going, "What are they talking about?" I mean, it was just it was just a different world, and we and all the way through it. I mean, probably uh, if you remember, you came to us I think in October of '82, mm -hmm. and we jumped on it right away. And Don started thinking about designs and stuff like that. And then you sent over your first continuity of, of uh, a sequence. And, uh, and and then he started asking questions like, "Wait a minute, they, we're going to go to a day. there's a moment any time during this little sequence of uh, of this particular room where he might die. We have to come up with ways of we branching the, the, the nomenclature though, and we would say this is a threat moment, this is a resolve moment, this is a new threat moment, this is a resolve moment. So we we kept saying threat resolve, threat resolve. The one that you got me because I was really out to lunch was you said, even after you finish the animation, we're going to have to program it." And I for a program. Yeah, I know what a program is. You read it when you go to the theater. I <laughs> got him. Programming meant, you know, and I knew that there was somewhere down in San Diego there was something weird going on. That's all I knew. Hmm. Well, it started with Rick's team, but then it. Yeah, it. It. I think there was a lot. There was an awful lot of controversy between our our companies. It started out real good, and then and then I think it. It got pretty contentious. Uh, uh, I think a lot of it had to do with the pressure too. Um, oh, yeah. We had um, hmm. we had the scripts. We had the artists that were doing all these concepts and so forth. That and for the most part, our team had no clue about the art of animation. True. And so they were they were coming up with things that that may or may not have been <laughs> animatable at all from. From your your all standpoint, yeah, it was, it was sort of like we were throwing lobbing stones at each other over a fence, uh, because we didn't know. I didn't understand your world at all, and and then there was some reticence on what we were doing up there. So each was doing its own thing. What we were familiar with, we with animation, and they with the the electronics. But also, Rick has a good sense of story and character, and so you know that's what I think was sustaining what was going on in your company. And then we were kind to. To grab the ball and run with it, but not knowing exactly what they were going to do with it when we reached the goalpost. Anyway, I think Dragon's Lair, Dragon's Lair, the first one, would have been even better than it was. I think if we understood each other's kingdoms. <laughs> but it was it was a moment of getting acquainted and we knowing what their job was and vice versa. Um, but I believe just the story elements that we hooked into almost immediately. And what we were trying to tell was a story of a knight who was a ne'er do well who was sort of klutzy. A ne'er-do-well. Didn't know quite what he was doing and wasn't very adept. Trying to save a princess that was equally not adept. And so I think, I think that it is absolutely getting acquainted because... <laughs> oh, thank you, you Epic Potato Theme. Uh, I'll grade it in a little while. ...from a standpoint. Right. And you were having to, to, uh, to work from how do, how do I bring it to life from an animation standpoint. And the problem was the the sometimes what we were ending up with wasn't playable as a game. It, it was beautiful as a as a piece of film, but but that they would get it back and go. He changed it. You how dropped the ball, you, Don. How are we gonna play with this? The way the way my brain has worked in the past is that I would see something and it would come on a concept. Maybe it's just in script form or written right there, and I'd say, oh, okay. So immediately I see the visions of it and what could be. So then in so doing, I'm gonna. I'm not going to let those words stop me because we have to push further. We have to push it to a place where you know we get something that's really, really excellent. Which again, what you're doing is building on something that's been put underneath you. Mm -hmm. Well, those who put that there are going to feel like, oh, you didn't like what I did, you know. And it isn't that at all? <laughs> Epic potato thing. That's a very good. Creative or collaborative process that's creative is that you are building on an idea all the time. This is always happening. And if you let your ego get a little bit sensitive to that. And it kind of cripples you. You should know the ideas are going to come. They come from out there somewhere. And when they come to you, it doesn't matter who births it. 
You know, it's just you want to keep going for even more if you can get it even better. And I think that's what we were going through in the beginning mm -hmm. was, yep. was how to make the best thing game-wise and picture-wise on the screen so that uh, the, the viewer could well, enjoy Well, the it. other problem is we were in uncharted waters. Completely, so, yeah. So there, it was, you know, a ship without a helm in some, it sometimes because we had never, you had never been there and we had never been there. And trying... That was fun. To, <laughs> <laughs> trying to... I didn't know that death it. existed. And, and I think, you know, we, we survived it in Dragon's Lair, went on to become, you know, that unimaginable success because of the fact that we really were in uncharted waters. And, and I think our audience, which is the game, the kids out there, um, they did it for the kids. They accepted it for what it was. Yeah, for the children. The point, they they didn't have any milestone to compare it to. Oh, here we go. This will be interesting. I was curious about the I restoration. Want to that out because we we got we had a moviola, this little thing that was this big. That was how we. That's the only way we ever saw this film was on a moviola. You know, the thing was about this big. Ter you know, terrible, but. But it allowed us to, to see the film, and then the best, the best we got was when we did the transfer, and transfer onto onto video a digital. Tag. It was actually digital, a video uh, or a video format. Yeah, even on one inch C back then, there the the quality was tel what today's television is. Uh, oh the no, quality it was, it was good quality. For, I mean, it was better than TV. TV couldn't but, actually reproduce the, the. But for me. I never really got to see a big screen of it. Yeah. And so today when we saw saw it on HD, uh, it's like for me it was like seeing it for the first Not the only first that, time. It was, it was just brilliant. It's just Colors. so clear. Yeah. You know, um, dust free. How about you and, and of course the sound is No, I'm mean, I'm very very pleased with the HD because to me that's what I saw all the way along we were making it. I mean even with the movie Ola, so we saw it on a big screen, we projected it in a projector. You see it on the big screen, and you look at it, and you see all the colors, all of the definitions, all of the lights and everything. It's all working together. So I'm used to seeing that. And so all the other formats we put this game to, I just sort of... Mm, <laughs> it was yeah. a lot less than what <laughs> well we put, Nick. Yeah. Look at them. I would not look Old at them. men I describe look HD now. transfers. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, that's closer. <laughs> well, you're a motion picture artist. <laughs> sea Beast and Barnacle Bill. And really all that was got done was a concept, not even a game design, just a one-page concept of what it was going to be. And uh, Don did a, uh, a poster, a pencil for, for a poster of Barnacle Bill and the Sea Beast. And uh, hmm. I think Don Moore or Ron Diaz, one of the background artists. It's cut from a similar cloth. A poster about this big. And people have seen that. And, people, you know, and, and they've of, asked about it. Part of what happens, too, is over the years, I think, I've noticed that we, we pick an interesting title and then try and fit a story into it. I mean, uh, All Dogs Go to Heaven was one of those titles. And, and you do it hoping that, you know, it has an attraction from just the, the concept or from the title of the thing. Sea Beast was one of those that just sort of rings when you hear it, the Sea Beast, you know, what is it? Uh, and some titles don't have that at all. And I, I like Dragon's we, Lair. We would have been glad to do anything where you tell a story because it's the storytelling that's fun, whether it's a game or whether it's a movie. Movies are a lot of fun because they keep you employed for a long time and you have this rising action and a climax and the falling off action and you have really interesting characters. With a game, had it gotten to the place where you could have an interactive movie, if it had progressed to that, uh, I would have been really That would have been a real challenge. Because mm -hmm. you know what, being passive, just sitting watching a movie and getting an opinion is all you really have. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's quite as interesting as participating in the movie somehow. Even if you're scared to death and you scream, at least you participated. But if you just sit and watch, uh, it's not quite the thrill. Let me, share, let me share a little more of the backstory too, because when we did Secret and M, our composer, Jerry Goldsmith, took the film or brought the film to Steven Spielberg's attention. And we had a meeting with Steven right after the completion of the showing of that. It was like August, early September of 82. And he, he looked at it and he says, gosh, I thought this died with Walt Disney. You know, the, the style and the, and the lushness mm -hmm. of, and the effects. and. It was especially co uh, complimentary on the uh, on the dub, which was m much fuller and richer than most animated movies done before. And um, he said, "We need to do something together." Well, it took two years before he came back to us, 
and he came back. It's just like Rick walked in in the middle of a of a of a, um, of a union Spike. strike. Spielberg walks in when the game industry fell apart. Mm -hmm. Here we had a lineup of I think Don came up uh, in a little group of story people. Just in time for ET. And, and Lorna was involved. Yeah. Don Pomeroy um, came up with a list of 30, 30 games, ten children games that were educational and teaching how to do addition and subtraction and multiplication. And they were little stories, and, and the computer would bring up random things like one plus three equals, and you had to give the right answer for the story to continue. It would be animated. And then we had 10 moral games for children that taught, you know, morals, like uh, <laughs> the story of Cinderella, but we called it, I think, Cinder Mouse. Cinder Mouse, right. And uh, Cinder Mouse. 10 action games for teenagers. And so they had a poster for every one of those, and one of those was Barnacle Bill and the Sea Beast. We trotted those off to, we had done <laughs> two animatics, or was it just one? I think it was just one. We did an eight minute animatic of uh, something called Dottie Do the Sum. It was a character named Dottie, D-O-T-T-I-E. And we did an animated. Um, Dottie Do the piece, Sum. IBM took it out and did a, a $100,000 survey with it, and parents were thrilled with the idea. But they said, well, there's just not enough players in the home for, for laser discs. Hardware. And we said, we're making razor blades. Give the players away. This, this is something that is going to lead into other and new technology. We didn't get any comers. <laughs> so just at the time that that failed, up stood Spielberg saying, I found something. It's called an American tale. I'd love to do that Barnacle Bill. Yeah, it would. Uh, I think um, <laughs> maybe the... the Buff dude with a uh, pinup girl? It would be an arcade game, although you could test it in arcades. To find could it, it work? work? But uh, with the ability to do interactive DVD now, I mean, it seems to me that you've got a lot more... Uh, um, homes that are equipped to, to play such a game. I mean, I thought it was interesting that Digital Leisure came up with a way to play Dragon's Lair using your remote controller on your DVD player. I mean, yeah. you know, with forward, back, you know, select for the button, and uh, kids can <laughs> play it with one hand, or parents. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing, because they weren't designed to be used for that yeah. way. No one really thought of that. But and and even those 30 games that we had designed for, uh, to work with IBM for, they were educational, or they were just, um, basically action adventure activity games for teenagers and then the, but especially the ones that were three to five or six year olds learning math learning uh, all the forms of math you know add, adding subtracting uh, multiplication you know right all of them some memorization of adding uh, subtracting multiplication numbers uh, everybody saw it as being very helpful and I don't think it's any different today I think that's something that uh, done probably even in uh, even in a CG format which the kids are used to now <laughs> Gosh, now we get deleted scenes. That was Rick's testing. I think um, things were animated. Some things actually were all the way to color. Some weren't. Uh, I know Digital Leisure took the... I want a special feature Dawn where Don Bluth, Bluth plays, plays Dragon's Lair. We all of the um, pencil tests and uh, were able to send those up to uh, Digital Leisure and they actually colored them and, and uh, used the backgrounds and mm. produced a, a version of it that the fans could all see. But those sequences were taken out because Rick's group, when they did the pay testing, bringing in, you know game enthusiasts in and paying them a, an hourly salary to play the game and tell them what works and what doesn't work, those sequences were hard to understand and, and hard to play. They downright boring. They didn't, it, it, that sequence doesn't work. Doesn't interest me, and it's difficult to get through. So, That's an uh, easy thing, though. That's a really an easy thing to go through because in movies all the time, a movie starts out really, really good and then it sags. And you say the material's bad, cut it out, you know, so then you have to hook it together again. And movies are all, they're sagging. And the sag moment is a moment that you're not doing anything very interesting. In games, you know. You Gamers said all the levels we saw were great. That was a highly contested issue at the time. And it got, it got left out in terms of the gameplay because we just found it was, it was too hard for an opening gambit into the game. It was too difficult for too many people were getting frustrated and they walk away from the machine, wouldn't put any more quarters in. So we, we basically just had had to let it go. Uh, we didn't want to, but it, we found that for the average Joe Blow, just starting, that's their first impression. And if they can't be successful at it, they're not going to keep putting money into the machine. So I think it, when those, when I 
tentacles came out of the water. It was it was really handsome to look at. At the same time, it was a shock, and they wouldn't be thinking about what <laughs> move they had to make. And they couldn't figure it so out. So they couldn't figure it out. So Stupid if, gamers. If, uh, if they did figure it out, it actually jumped over the, the final action of that, you know, him breaking through and falling in the water. A coin op rate has always been uh, a true test of the quality of a game because you're really asking a kid to reach into his pocket and pull out more money. And the game better be really good for him to reach into his pocket and pull out more money. Chicago Game Show. We did the first um, test of Dragon Slayer as far as exposing it to the audience was at the March 1983 game show in Chicago. And it was such a huge hit. I think that gave everybody the <laughs> impetus to keep going and get going on the next that, thing. That you know, I hate story. to cut this short. <laughs> It's getting to be about the time when I probably need to call it a night. Um, so I think this is probably going to be where I jump off for the evening. I don't know if it's going to get super exciting from here. If it does, I apologize. But I wanted to thank everybody for joining me tonight. This was super fun. I can't believe I finally got to play my way through to the end of Dragon's Lair and Dragon's Lair 2. Uh, well, I didn't play my way to the end of that. I cheated that one, but I played my way to the end of Space Ace also. Thanks, everyone, for watching along. Thanks for the support. Before we call it quits, let's see if there's anybody that we can raid. If nothing else, just drop in and say howdy to them. Oh, this is interesting. Um, let's see here. Let me see what we have going on. It looks like Taco Adventure is playing Space Quest The Lost Chapter, which is a... Uh, a fan game that you don't see a lot of out there uh, these days. So I think I may launch a raid over to Taco Adventures channel. Drop by, say Jess sent you. But for now, thanks again for watching. Thanks for the support. I'll be back Wednesday night with Retro Adventure Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be, I think, finishing up Quest for Glory 2. And I'm going to announce what I think is going to be a really fun slate of games coming up for the next week or so. I'm really excited to talk about it. So I'll tell you about what's coming up then. But for now, let's head over and say hey to Taco Adventure. Have a great evening, everybody. And I will see you again soon.